Good morning. Please be seated as the Reverend Jackie Marquez, Dean of Religious and Spiritual Life, delivers the invocation. May peace and joy be ours in abundance this day as we celebrate the lives and the accomplishments of this graduating class. Let us share together each in our own way in a moment of reflection, of prayer and thanksgiving for the journey that led our students to and through Wellesley College. We come from many religious, spiritual, philosophical traditions that speak to us, offering ancient wisdom and strength. We are in the presence of our creator, in the presence of our ancestors, and among friends, bound together in a caring community. Sacred source of all that is good and beautiful and true. We give our thanks for the ways these students have transformed Wellesley College with their presence and through their action. We give thanks for knowledge acquired and experience gained, for the generous support and encouragement of mentors, faculty, staff, family, and friends that have brought each student to this day. We are deeply grateful for the time we've spent with them and the many mem memories we have shared. We ask that these students be empowered with courage to lift their voices in wisdom and humility as they work for the greater good. May they create spaces of welcome for those on the margins or in need of a healing community everywhere they go. We bless their doubts and certainties. May their decisions lead to a life full of meaning and purpose. Bless the homes from which they come. Bless their families and all who love them and rejoice with them at their achievements. Holy One, we ask that your gracious and loving presence be among us now as we gather to reflect and rejoice. Amen. It is now my pleasure to introduce Keisha James, enrolled member of the Wampanoag tribe of Gayhead Aquina and Oglala Lakota, who will share a land acknowledgement on behalf of the students of the senior class. <laughs> Wani Matopan, good morning. Natasuis Kimi Milasha, Nu Tamas Aquinahanat. My name is Red Butterfly. I come from the land under the hill and the people of the first light. I offer my respects to the land and to the ancestors whose spirits still walk among us. I also wish to acknowledge and honor the previous generations of indigenous students at Wellesley College who have paved the way for my generation. We feel their presence here with us today. Kunipiu Notakimoan, welcome to our land that is inseparable from our bodies. Today, the class of 2021 makes history by becoming the first class to acknowledge that Wellesley College occupies the ancestral, traditional, and contemporary unceded lands of the Massachusetts and Nipmuc tribes. We recognize that we are on stolen land and we extend our gratitude for their ongoing stewardship of this land. We acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal of indigenous peoples from this territory, as well as the imprisonment and cultural genocide that occurred in the so-called praying towns in this area and elsewhere. We also make history today by acknowledging as Neon. We are still here. Indigenous people are still here. Therefore, we commit to recognizing, supporting, and advocating for the sovereignty of all indigenous nations, including the Wampanoag, Nipmuc, and Massachusetts, whose traditional territories are in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We commit ourselves to holding up the indigenous peoples from many nations who work and study in the town of Wellesley and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. By offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm indigenous sovereignty and commit to holding ourselves and each other more accountable to the needs of indigenous peoples. Kutapatotamausch.
Thank you. Thank you, Keisha. Thank you, Dean Marquez. On behalf of the trustees, faculty, staff, alumni, and the Wellesley class of 2021, I welcome you to the college's 143rd commencement exercises. It is truly a joy to greet you today. What an extraordinary morning to join together in celebration. What a moment and what an occasion to arrive at together and the sun shines through and acknowledges that with us. To all of you watching today's ceremony along with us, thank you for the support you have offered and the sacrifices you have made so that these students could graduate today. Thank you especially for all that you've done over the course of this challenging year. While we are sorry that you are not here in person today, we know that you are with us through the magic of Zoom and live stream, and we feel your presence, your love for these students. and your joy in their accomplishments. I also want to acknowledge those who could not join us today. I think of those who've passed on from this life, but remain with us in spirit, including those we've lost in the pandemic. You are not forgotten. We remember and we thank you. Class of 2021, it is an honor to share the beginning of the next phase of your journey with you. You have proven as a class that in times of crisis, community can be your greatest strength, and you represent that strength in countless ways. We are so proud of you. So now, I'm pleased to invite to the stage co-presidents of the class of 2021, Shreya Parjan, and Katie Kristoff to introduce our student speaker. Hello, Evergreen Class of 2021. A few months back, the college asked if we had a cute nickname as a class, and you know, we were a little floored. I mean, up until that point, we hadn't really seen our class as having any kind of distinct identity. Um, we weren't the loudest and the proudest, or the hottest and most interesting. But man, had we been through the most. <laughs> Bent over our computer screens, we've broken down the biggest challenges faced by a graduating class at Wellesley and in the world. We stood tall in all four seasons. We persevered in all four terms. And on behalf of your senior class council, it has been one of my greatest honors to serve and to celebrate you all as we've done so. <laughs> now, our class tree is just a little guy out in Munger Meadow, unassuming but growing, digging its roots into this community to soon rise alongside generations of Wellesley alums, and always, standing its own ground and sustaining its own strength. Because we are strong like no other. And so righteously, we are the Evergreen Class of 2021. From Katie, Lauren, Molly, Alyssa, Lauren, Becca, and myself, we hope you keep reaching for new skies as you keep your roots in this soil. Thank you.
When I returned to campus this spring, I found myself getting, taking the time to get to know the class trees with a dear friend, because I'd once heard someone say that we walk in the literal and metaphorical shade of former Wellesley students. Seniors, as we leave today, whether you have only a few minutes or a few hours left here after commencement, I encourage you all to get to know a tree and return to it at our five, 10, 25 year reunion. See how much it's grown. See how it's still standing. And know that you will still be standing too. And on that note, I am absolutely honored to be standing before you today to introduce one of my dearest friends as our 2021 student speaker. She's a Haitian Jamaican anthropology and Spanish double major, the president of Upstage, and being around her makes you feel like you're experiencing the warmth of the sun from both sides. Our student speaker fell into my orbit the same way that most things at Wellesley tend to. She sent me an email, y'all. No, seriously. As many of you surely know by now, especially this past week, I send a lot of emails into the void. But Leah, Leah would respond something sweet or let me know she laughed at one of my silly jokes. And if the rest of y'all didn't, that's okay. And she made my day every single time. Leah is one of the most intentional people I've ever met. When she tells you we should get lunch sometime when she runs into you on campus, she means it. And when she sets up camp next to you in the Palm living room at 11 p.m. the night before theses are due, you know she'll be right there with you until you're both finished. And at 3.09 a.m. on Friday, May 7th, thesis and seniors, y'all were there, with a cup of orange juice and a smile, Leah was right there with me. In the words of one of her advisors, Leah has consistently and generously given of herself while at Wellesley, and for that, we have all been made better. And Professor Angela Carpenter told me, she does Wellesley proud, and as a fellow Jamaican, she does Jamaica proud. When I asked one of her best friends, she said, when I met her four years ago, I knew I wanted to know her forever. And just between all of you and me and Leah, my dear, so do I. Class of 2021, I am honored to welcome to the stage my dear friend and your student commencement speaker, Leah Patricia James. Surprise, Dad. <laughs> I trust you'll all forgive whatever lipstick has made its way from my lips to my nose and also my chin, thanks to my mask. <laughs> Hello, and thank you, Katie and Shreya, for those beautiful words and for guiding us through this ridiculous year. <laughs> Members of the Board of Trustees, President Johnson, distinguished guest representative Liz Miranda, faculty, staff, family, friends, and fellow members of the Evergreen class of 2021 here and online, good morning. <laughs> or good afternoon or good evening. I know at least one member of our class is watching from New Zealand and it's about 3 a.m. there. So to you, enjoy that cup of coffee for the both of us. <laughs> it is a privilege to be here today. There's a Haitian proverb that says, 
songez la pli qui levé maïou. It translates roughly to remember the rain that made your corn grow. When I was younger, I used to think that this proverb evoked nothing but beautiful, peaceful imagery of morning showers that culminated in a bountiful harvest, the rain that made your corn grow. One day, when I was about 15 years old and placing the third empty bucket on my bedroom floor to collect water in the middle of a hurricane, it dawned on me that rain in that proverb might actually have been meant to represent hardship. The rain that made your corn grow. After four incredibly rainy and snowy years, I've decided that both interpretations of the proverb hold water. The earliest Wellesley memory I associate with rain is one of my first, our Spring Open Campus 2017. Since I'm an international student, I hadn't had the cross-country college tours that I'd seen others have on TV. Wellesley was one of the only schools I'd had the privilege of visiting. As many of you will recall, it rained nearly the whole time, or at least that's how I remember it. I'd get lost in the fog at least thrice, trying to get from French house where my host lived to Bates for a meal. It's a wonder that so many of us made it through that freezing cold, wet weekend, still excited to enroll. But we did. Since then, I have made more memories than I can possibly share in one nostalgic speech. Plus, sharing my own Wellesley memories would feel far too self-centered. We all know there's no universal Wellesley experience. This rings even truer, considering that many of us did not spend our senior spring on campus. This past year, the Wellesley experience involved professors and interviewers seeing our maid and, in my case, often unmade beds, our cats or dogs or lizards or home improvement projects regularly attending classes with us and using bad Wi-Fi instead of bad weather as an excuse to miss class. So no, there is no universal Wellesley experience we haven't all had to weather the same storms. And folks, looking at the forecast last night, I must admit that I wrote in so many last minute rain jokes that I'm very glad I will not have to subject you all to. <laughs> anyway, despite our varied experiences, there are a few things I am sure will be familiar to most of us. We're all familiar with tears, right? Tears of joy, relief, distress, remorse, and just about everything in between. Late nights that turned into early mornings without a wink of sleep, that feeling during the week of orientation, and perhaps every week after that, that we had maybe been admitted by accident. Not knowing exactly what the orientation theme stretch out loud really meant. Was that just me? Receiving our ninth or 90th school-wide email about a missing snack from Trader Joe's or a number two pencil. Recognizing that we may never again participate in a forum as lively, as divisive, and as controversial as the Wellesley Memes Facebook page. Finally, living through March 12, 2020. I think we all remember that one, that rain. Four years in, I am still blown away by the radical acts of courage and advocacy that I see spearheaded by members of our class. Holding members of the community accountable to a higher standard of empathy, holding the administration accountable to the values that attracted us to Wellesley in the first place, and insisting relentlessly in any way we can that Wellesley be the place it vowed to us that it would be. If there's one thing I hope Wellesley has done for you all that I know it has done for me, it's this. Wellesley has given me the space to find myself. 
I hope during your time at Wellesley that you've discovered something about what drives you, who you are, who you like, and what you want, or at least what you absolutely don't want to do with your life. I can't be the only one who has experienced a moment of crisis when asked where I see myself in five years. Am I the woman who will that every Wellesley communication insists that I can and should be? Plus, will what? <laughs> I'm meant to make a difference in the world? How? Where? <laughs> Why me? In a feeble attempt to answer these questions, I've decided to quote the famous Wellesley alum, Nora Ephron, like many a student speaker before me. In her address to the class of 1996 at their commencement, which thankfully was a lot rainier than ours is, I had to sneak one in there, Ephron said, one of the things people always say to you if you get upset is, don't take it personally. But, she continues, Listen hard to what's going on, and please, I beg you, take it personally. While that was all the way back in 1996, Efron's charge is timeless. Our college experience is bookended by two divisive and frightening US presidential elections and the renewal of a revolutionary era for racial justice. Over the past four years, we have joined fights that we did not start. Fights that were started by our ancestors and that are still far from oval. Fights being fought on stolen land, both here and abroad. We must continue to take this personally, understanding that liberation is a global pursuit and that your freedom is my freedom, is their freedom, is our freedom. This, this is the rain that makes our corn grow. It is our responsibility to keep surviving and to fight for the survival of all of us, especially those of us whose belonging and right to live in this country are called into question every day. On that note, to my black, indigenous, Asian, Latine, immigrant, low-income, non-binary, trans, first-gen, and other minority sibs. To those among us at the intersections of the identities I just named, the odds did not want us to be here. And yet, here we are. Here we are, thanks to all of you who supported us. Now to those watching who dreamed of being here to see your child, grandchild, cousin, parent, or mentee graduate from Wellesley. To those whose degrees are dedicated to a grand-mère, an hermanito, a yeye, a samchon, a shangazi. To my mother, who lost her battle here on earth, but who I know is watching me now, just like she said she would. It pains me that because of death, circumstance, or a global pandemic, we could not have everyone we love gathered in one place to celebrate this monumental achievement. Thank you for being the push we needed to submit that assignment, to ask that question, to take that class, to attend those office hours, to follow through. Thank you for being our reign. Now, to every member of this evergreen class, we can be revolutionary. You are revolutionary. 
being who you are in a world doing its best to make you conform is a radical act. Like Representative Miranda says, embrace joy as resistance. One day, if each of us does the work that needs to be done, maybe joy won't have to be resistance anymore. Maybe it can just be joy. Songez la pluie qui levait maillou. Remember the rain that made your corn grow, evergreen class, in both senses of the proverb. Remember the torrential downpours that you overcame to get to this moment. You did that. You made it. You survived. <laughs> At the same time, remember the peaceful mist that nourished us, the dining hall worker who gave you a kind smile, the custodian who let you run frantically in and pee before your next class before they close the bathroom for cleaning. The goose that did not chase you across Sev Green. What an adventure we've had, stretching out loud these past four years. Stay loud. Say what needs to be said. Consciously and deliberately work to dismantle the systems of oppression that you see at work in each of your own communities. Be an ally be an advocate, be a co-conspirator for change. It has been a distinct honor and a great pleasure to learn with and from you, to be held accountable by you, and to love you. Remember the rain. I can't wait to see what grows. Leah, thank you for those powerful words. The Penansky Prize for Excellence in Teaching is awarded each year to honor members of our faculty who have demonstrated excellence as teachers. When we consider how Wellesley professors routinely innovate and inspire in their classrooms, to be selected for this prize must be seen as an especially outstanding achievement. As the class of 2021 can attest, and as I can affirm, Wellesley's faculty are immensely dedicated and talented educators, researchers, scholars, artists, and mentors. Not even a pandemic can hold them back from their charge of educating students who will make a difference in the world. In my conversations with our students and alumni, there's always one constant, their eagerness to tell me their story of how a Wellesley professor changed their life and helped them achieve breakthroughs, both academic and personal. So from all of us gathered today here on campus and watching around the world, to the Wellesley College faculty, we thank you for your commitment to the education of the class of 2021. Applause 
According to the rules for the prize, the finalists are selected by a student faculty committee on the basis of nominations from students, faculty, and staff. Today, we recognize last year's winners alongside this year's. I'll start by recognizing the 2020 winners, and I'd like to ask each faculty member to stand when, I, when their name is called, and then join me on stage while I read excerpts from each of their citations. Angela Baines, Associate Professor of Psychology. Amy Banzert, Lecturer in Engineering and Director of Engineering Studies. Daniela Rivera, Barbara Morris Casperin, Associate Professor of Humanities and Associate Professor of Art. Angela Baines, Associate Professor of Psychology. Students describe their time studying social psychology with Professor Angela Baines as riveting. Riveting, challenging, and empowering. She adeptly balances critical readings, class discussions, mock research conference presentations, and short field experiments to help students consider how prejudice and discrimination shape daily life and how they can use their knowledge to affect change. For pushing her students to think critically about data and empirical findings, for guiding them through all stages of the research process, and for cultivating class, a classroom dynamic that allows them to speak and question without fear of judgment, it is an honor to present Angela Baines with the Anna and Samuel Panansky Teaching Prize. <laughs> Amy Banzert, Lecturer in Engineering and Director of Engineering Studies. For Professor Amy Banzert, nurturing an inclusive equitable environment in the classroom, the lab, and the field of engineering is paramount. Students praise her efforts to make engineering fun and accessible, to promote diversity, inclusion, accessibility, and safety in the classroom and the lab. Her commitment to team building and her emphasis on creating an environment in which students feel respected and heard. It's an honor to present Amy Banzert with the Anna and Samuel Panansky Teaching Prize. <laughs> Daniela Rivera, Barbara Morris Casper, an Associate Professor of Humanities and Associate Professor of Art. Professor Daniela Rivera is a gifted instructor and lecturer, her students say. And as an artist, she is keenly interested in working at the intersection of disciplines and opposing schools of thought. She makes an effort to help every student who passes through her studio for empowering her students, for fostering their ability to see and make connections, and for encouraging them to remember, as one student puts it, that there is no separation in life between each thing we create. It is an honor to present Daniela Rivera with the Anna and Samuel Panansky Teaching Prize. I will now recognize the 2021 winners. Again, please stand when your name is called and join me on stage. Rebecca Belial, Assistant Professor of Physics. Selwyn 
Kujo, Professor of Africana Studies. And Alice Friedman, Grace Slack McNeil Professor of American Art and Professor of Art. Rebecca Belial, Assistant Professor of Physics. <laughs> professor Belial is the kind of professor that I had hoped to encounter when I decided to study at a liberal arts college, says one student. She is an invaluable mentor, says another, for cultivating an inclusive environment in the classroom and the lab, for making every effort to help her students succeed, and for her emphasis on learning as a process and practice. It is an honor to present Rebecca Belisle with the Anna and Samuel Penansky Teaching Prize. <laughs> Selwyn R. Cujo. Professor of Africana Studies. During his more than three decades at Wellesley, Professor Selwyn Cujo has left an indelible impression on students for his tireless dedication to the Wellesley community, for showing students the interdependence of academic disciplines and the elements of lived experience that help shape our world and for awakening in students an abiding love for Africana studies. It is an honor to present Selwyn Cujo with the Anna and Samuel Penansky Teaching Prize. Alice Friedman, Grace Slack McNeil Professor of American Art and Professor of Art. For over 40 years, Professor Alice Friedman has been a renowned presence in the Department of Art and in, in our architecture program, shaping the education and lives of Wellesley students. And through that work, the practice of architecture and the study of architectural history for the compassion she shows each of her students, her dedicated service to the college, and her path-breaking contributions to the practice of architecture and the study of architectural history. It is an honor to present Alice Friedman with the Anna and Samuel Penansky Teaching Prize. Congratulations again to our 2020 and 2021 Penansky Prize winners. Thank you. You may now return to your seats. I am now thrilled to introduce and welcome back today's speaker, State Representative Liz Miranda, Wellesley Class of 2002. When this class set out to choose a speaker, it was with keen awareness of the challenges that await them as new graduates at this pivotal moment. More than ever, 
it was clear that the old normal isn't working, that the goal must be to recreate and re-envision the world. Quickly, Liz Miranda became the obvious choice. Who better to speak to this year's graduates than someone who's shown the way, a bold and effective change maker whose life exemplifies the power of Wellesley in the world. Liz Miranda grew up in Roxbury, Massachusetts, where she has lived her entire life, part of the same district that she now represents as state representative in the 5th Suffolk District of Roxbury and Dorchester. The daughter of Cabo Verdean immigrants, she attended one of Boston's public exam schools, the John D. O'Brien School of Mathematics and Science, and arrived at Wellesley at age 17, a first-generation college student. While Wellesley was only miles from home, it felt like another world. She was hard-pressed to find others who looked and sounded like her. Yet over time, these very challenges would spur her on. Seeking to feel more at home, she looked for ways to contribute. She worked in Harambe House, was active in ethos, and served as an RA. She began to thrive academically and made lifelong friends. Looking back, she says simply, Wellesley saved my life. Since graduation, she has paid this forward many times over. Indeed, I can think of no one who more powerfully embodies Wellesley's Latin motto, non ministrare sed ministrare, not to be ministered unto, but to minister. In everything she's done, she sought to serve and empower others. Before her election to the state legislature, Representative Miranda worked as a community and youth organizer in Boston, eventually becoming executive director of Roxbury's Horthon Youth and Community Center. Previously, she served as the director of youth opportunity development at the Dudley Street Neighborhood Initiative. Her decision to run for office stemmed from a desire to, as she once put it, turn my pain into power. This came on the heels of the stunning 2016 presidential election, as well as a personal tragedy. In 2017, she lost her 28-year-old brother, Michael, to gun violence, a loss that was all the more devastating given her own work for gun control. She ran a fierce grassroots campaign, seeking out people on street corners, in laundromats and bodegas, talking about voting as both an act of love and power. It worked. People came out to vote in droves. She won every ward and precinct and set a record of over 10,000 voters in that election. Since then, she has not surprisingly been a force to be reckoned with. She has filed and passed legislation to reform policing and save black lives, improve racial disparities in maternal health, promote environmental justice, and support the micro to small businesses hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, she was the first legislator in the Commonwealth to establish a district-led community care program that assisted over 3,000 vulnerable residents in Roxbury and Dorchester with food security, housing assistance, unemployment assistance, and access to COVID-19 testing. There is more, much more, and even more to come. Several years ago, Liz Miranda had this to say to the Wellesley Magazine. Wellesley inspired me over and over again to be the type of person who would come back to make a difference in my community. Today, she returns to our community and we could not be more proud. Representative Miranda, welcome home.
going to go home after Leah's speech. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, class of 2021, the green class. Welcome to the 143rd commencement at Wellesley. I am just simply here to remind you that you are worthy, you are enough, and you belong. I want to thank, thank the spirit of the universe that has made today possible. Even though not all of us can physically share in this space, I want you all to know from around the world tuning in that even apart, we are still together. Sibs, let's take a moment to be present, to breathe, to feel the weight of this moment. You made it. You deserve this. You earned this. Thank yourself. Think of the year that we've survived together. I'm so tired of Zooms. <laughs> Look around to all who have gathered to celebrate you on one of the most sacred days of your lives. Let us remember and never forget the 3.5 million lives we've lost during the COVID-19 pandemic. We've lost our loved ones, friends and family members and complete strangers, including my avo, my grandmother, Maria Andrade Alves Miranda. She was my everything. Let us never forget the 1,068 Americans that have been murdered by the police since the death of George Floyd. I create space today for far too many black women and trans women who have been brutalized and murdered by the police. Breonna Taylor, Makia Bryant, Sandra Bland, to say the names of only a few, but we know that only one is too many. I thank my mother Maria, who gave birth to a baby girl in 1980 at the age of 18, and she radically loved her. Thank you, mommy. I love you. Because of you, I've worked earnestly to make you and my people proud. Obrigado, mãe, nta mau, pa modi bon trabajariju, pa faze bo e nos povo sinti ogulio. I thank the Wellesley Native American Students Association, the administration, and the student organizers for acknowledging that we are on the land of the Massachusetts tribe. I honor them and our African ancestors on whose shoulders we stand, there would be no us or this place without generations of their stewardship, suffering, and survival on this very land. I thank President Dr. Paula Johnson, the first African-American woman to serve as president of this institution in its 146 year history. I see you. I thank the administration, the senior class, the board of trustees, the faculty and staff who made this ceremony possible. I am incredibly humbled that you chose me to share this sacred space with you. To the graduates, all 570 of you, some whom are here on this very green and over 100 students who are tuning in virtually from Rwanda, Morocco, Zimbabwe, India, China, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, and Puerto Rico. I see each and every one of you. I am now one of only 16 black women who have ever graced this podium. In its 143 years of this address, joining trailblazers like Rep. Eleanor Holmes Norton, the first to bless this stage. Others who followed like Maya Angelou, Anita Hill, Oprah, Toni Morrison, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, and now me, Representative Liz Miranda. Can you believe? Can you believe they let me back up in this place? I hold gratitude for black women, the bedrock of our democracy, who paved the way for me. Like my sorority sisters of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, Zai Tao Chapter, the late, ooh, the late Rachel Beverly, Kelly Brown, Miss Carol Estridge, Philomena Steady, 
and Dr. Robin Cook Nobles. The world is a better place because of them, and the world will soon become a better place because of you. Sibs, I hope that as I share my story, you will see parts of yourself woven in my remarks. I share to express a radical belief that I actually hold. You don't have to be perfect to do great things. But you do have to speak your own truth as a catalyst in the change you want to see in the world. Even if your life's challenges are different from mine, remember that all of us have moments in our life where our backs are against the wall. Sibs, let me share some of my story. I can remember the drive from my grandparents' house on Clifton Street in Roxbury to Central Street here in Wellesley in the fall of 1998, only 10 miles away but felt like worlds apart. My family story begins with my grandfather, Manuel Gonzalez Miranda, who came to Boston in pursuit of the American dream in 1976 from the newly freed colony of Cabo Verde in the west coast of Africa, after a war led by Amilcar Cabral against Portuguese colonial rule. With a full heart and working hands, he came to build a foundation working in a factory, preparing to send for his family still back home. Our family came to this community at a crossroads, experiencing environmental injustices, redlining, divestment, but also it was transforming into a vibrant tapestry of people from different cultures. There are two movies and a book called Streets of Hope about our neighborhood, the Dudley Triangle, rebuilding the community after decades of injustice. I bore witness to the people of our community who literally reimagined what our community could be and rose from the ashes, reclaiming over 1,400 parcels of vacant land for public good. It is here that I learned about my own agency, the power of hope and possibility. From whom and where I come from is such an important part of who I am and who you are. I embraced my family story, became stronger from the lessons of community organizing and the power of everyday people to do extraordinary things. That beautiful tapestry of people was a powerful driving force across my life. Thank you to the people of Roxbury and Dorchester who taught me how to speak truth to my own power and see my worth in a world that was determined not to. I chose Wellesley because my mother, who's a cook in the back of Boston's hotels, told me a story about the head chef in disbelief that her daughter got into Wellesley. She must have been mispronouncing the college's name. I wanted to prove him wrong, so I did. The world tells us a story about us that is hardly ever true, but what that chef didn't understand is that my mother, the cook, has taught me more about life than college ever could. Not that George Bush is my homie, right? But he said something that has stuck with me my entire life. I know, George Bush, right? I'm so far left and he's so far right. Never, I digress. But he talked about the bigotry of low expectations. Before my move-in day at Wellesley, I had never stepped foot on this campus. I couldn't, I was at work. I missed orientation, I was at work. I was always at work. As the students around me started to settle in, I was filled with worry. My birth father had just been deported. My siblings were incarcerated. I worried whether or not I could even afford to stay in this beautiful place. My family had already sacrificed so much. My family and I had pulled up to Wellesley like 20 deep with my little cousins and my three-piece Sanyo radio stereo, I'm dating myself, and my prized Tupac poster in the back of a U-Haul truck. I was probably illegal though. It was a whole family affair. And as we drove the windy road to Stone D, I remember it being so green with castle-like structures and the air smelled so pure and fresh. I was now the fresh princess of Wellesley. 
I was ready for my Hillman College experience that I had seen on TV, the fictitious college on the show A Different World. And sure enough, A Different World, this would truly be for me. After my family left, I felt so alone. But I was not alone. I didn't know that yet. I had my roommate, Amelia, who was the ballerina from West Virginia, my soon-to-be family at Stone D, Anna and Regina, the first two sibs I met walking, trying to get to my trash bin and flip-flops from the Student Aid Society. I missed my family and friends. I missed my block, the sights and sounds of Dudley Street, the sound of Funana, children's laughter in the schoolyard in 90s hip-hop the smell of soul food and arroz con frijoles, and my grandmother yelling, me, yelling to me in Criolo to come inside, bendidentu. I miss the noise, right? The 15 bus, and I soon realized that I was actually no longer home, but in a matter of weeks, I would build a whole new community, a new family that would support me through my journey at Wellesley. It was not all a fairy tale, though. Although I expanded my mind and held fond memories, I struggled here. I wasn't even sure if I even liked this place. True story. Uh, many times I questioned if I even belonged here, but I did. Photo photocopying books in the Knapp Center I couldn't afford to buy, working two to three jobs through my four years here, while doing my classwork in the wee hours of the morning, while eating meals, the dining hall workers saved for me. I felt like the world was on my shoulders and no one would come to save me. I remember being half asleep, half asleep, in poli sci 100, learning about political theorists, including Niccolo Machiavelli, author of The Prince, all the while thinking, the professor was talking about Machiavelli, my favorite Tupac. My favorite rapper, Tupac Shakur. Tupac was a philosopher too, just like Nicolo. I can hear the words of his poem in my mind, quote, did you hear about the rose that grew from the crack in the concrete, proving nature's laws wrong? It learned to walk without having feet. Funny it seems to by keeping its dreams it learned to breathe fresh air, end quote. I was that rose from the concrete. For some of you, Wellesley has been your home, a beautiful oasis that helped you become who you are today. For some of you, this space created challenges that were difficult to overcome. You may have struggled with imposter syndrome and felt like you did not belong. I have learned that home is not always just about one physical space. It is not just about the beautiful memories of where you grew up. Home is also the space that you create for yourself. The love and agency you use to build a beloved community all around you creating your own sacred space where you can be your authentic self. It's never easy, but it's so worth it. You will create beautiful new spaces that bring healing to our society, innovation to our doorsteps, and transformational love to countless communities. The late Dr. Tony Martin encouraged me to write a thesis. He was a brilliant professor. He convinced me in my first year to study who I was the impact of the diaspora across the world. And it was the start of my path towards loving my blackness. <laughs> Ultimately, this would carry me to write an honors senior thesis on the history of black women graduates of Wellesley. See, not every feminist was Gloria Steinem. We fought with the administration every chance we got to protect ethos and to increase diversity in student life activities, faculty and students. I survived so much just to get from Roxbury to Wellesley. And in these moments, I finally realized that although I was taught to need a degree to make it, this college needed me more than I needed it.
And in fact, all institutions need us. Hey! They need us. They need us to add, to disrupt, to push, and to elevate. Over four years on this campus, the community we built together worked to hold the institution accountable, just like you have. You've carried a torch that will not stop today, or tomorrow, or the next year. Every generation has the opportunity and the responsibility to move us closer to justice. You have organized, mobilized up until the very day of commencement. You fought to reimagine public safety on this campus, to end the use of gendered language, and the institution's investment in fossil fuels. There is something about this place that forces you to reflect not only on who you are today, but who you want to be tomorrow. When I sat in your seat as a graduating senior in the class of 2002, I make 40 look good, right, y'all? Okay. Here goes George Bush. George Bush was president of the United States, and we had invaded Afghanistan just three months before commencement. This clearly was not a moment when President Bush was worried about the bigotry of low expectations. I remember listening to our commencement speaker, Whoopi Goldberg. Yes, Whoopi's the bomb. Who shared with us that the world was vastly different after September 11. And what we was, and what was really important to remember was who we wanted to be in that new world and how it required our help, how to check our own baskets of judgment. With the confrontation of COVID-19, our public health crisis, we find ourselves working through one of the most difficult moments in our history. The weight of this moment has us feeling ill-equipped as we continue to fight against the 400 plus year history of racism and police violence against black and brown bodies. Before our very eyes, we are witnessing an economic collapse, an exploitation of the working class while increasing wealth for the 1%. When I think, thank you, when I think about this chaotic world that we've all inherited and are also responsible for, all I can think is, this is sure hell lot. Has someone created the Zoom link for world peace and tranquility yet? because I'd be on it. Uh, some of us already feel emotionally fatigued and physically drained from the pressures of the past 16 months. Dr. King once said, I have seen the power of God transform the fatigue of despair into the buoyancy of hope. I am convinced that the universe is under the control of a loving purpose and that in the struggle for justice, all of humanity has constant companionship. Sibs, although there is so much that is pushing up against us, my heart is full of joy and hope today because we continue to push forward. The Black Lives Matter movement is pushing us forward. The movement and hatred toward our Asian friends and neighbors is pushing us forward. And climate justice organizers who are fighting for our world are pushing us forward. And the disruptors, and the truth tellers who are fighting to restore and protect our shared humanity. Sibs, you are pushing us forward. In 2017, after my brother Michael was murdered, tragedy pushed me forward. It was a defining moment that called me to serve. Just like movements of our time built on pain, tragedy, loss, and injustice, my brother's loss built a movement in me. When I first walked into the Massachusetts State House, I learned quickly that that space was not built for me either. But I was drawn to the answer and to answer the call to serve. See, the assignment was bigger than me. But now more than ever, I am determined to make this space my home, just like the Dudley Triangle is my home and just like Wellesley is my home. 
Now I have the power to make any space I enter home. Sibs, you will encounter a world with spaces that feel like you don't belong, but you hold the power and agency to make it your home and to stand in your truth. It is true that this time in our history has changed us forever, but that feeling isn't new. I too left Wellesley and entered an uncertain world. I was too afraid not to have all the answers, but there is hope. In the time that has passed, I have been a dozen or more different versions of myself. I've failed, I've lost jobs, and lacked confidence. I've known heartache more times than I care to acknowledge and paralyzing defeat and deafening disappointment. My life truly is a perfect example of triumph over tragedy. But guess what? I've also known exhilarating joy and enduring faith, real love, the beauty of friendship, and the warmth of achievement. On this journey, I've experienced life-altering compassion and generosity of those who are familiar and those who are unknown. See, I always wanted more out of my life and to do better and to want better and to do more. I am proud that I survived and accomplished many things in this complex life, and now so have you. I humbly submit to you that we are able to overcome the impossible by loving ourselves. Remember to choose you and to offer yourself grace. Speak truths and use them as a catalyst for changing the world. There will always be a new beginning, a new space that will require you to become anew. Use the gifts of your imperfections, the power of your story and the community you've built to drive you forward. Be brave, Sibs, be brave. The world needs you. Continue to demand more. In closing, when your back is against the wall, confronted with the weight of the world, and unsure about how you will contribute, it is important to ask yourself one question. Why not you? Why not you? You are worthy, you are enough, you belong. Thank you, congratulations, class of 2021. Thank you, Liz. Thank you for those uplifting words. Your story is an inspiration to all of us. Thank you. Good afternoon, Evergreen class of 2021. You have just completed a remarkable journey. Let me be among the first to say congratulations. What a day this is and what a moment. Congratulations, too, to all who supported you along the way, especially through this last most difficult of years. To your family and friends, teachers, mentors, allies, and inspirations, a heartfelt thanks for all you did to make this day possible. This is a commencement like no other, which is fitting because you, the class of 2021, are a class like no other. Sadly, you can't all be on campus today. Due to the pandemic, you are scattered around the world across nations and time zones. Yet the same challenge that kept you apart also draws you together. This truth was beautifully captured in a Wellesley News piece by your classmate, Misha Lurska. There cannot be shared drinks nor tender embraces and tears can feel redundant, she wrote. But there is connection and there is pride in this time. Nobody has done this before and that 
is a senior year worth remembering. Nobody has done this before, and we certainly hope no one will again. <laughs> Your senior year was so different from what you had imagined. Yet again and again, you found new ways to keep Wellesley, Wellesley. Your many triumphs this past year truly inspire me. That said, they don't surprise me. From the start, it was clear that you were extraordinary. Your brilliance, your passion, your idealism, these qualities shone through from your first days on campus. The crises of this era have only spurred you on. You've voted, you've protested, you've organized, you've learned and you've taught. You've advocated and volunteered, you've fought for what you believe. Wellesley's mission is to prepare students to make a difference in the world you, class of 2021, are already making that difference. You have also left an enduring mark on Wellesley College. You've challenged us and you've changed us. It hasn't always been easy, but you have made us so much better. Thanks to you, we're doing far more to address climate change. Your leadership and willingness to approve a carbon-reducing student ballot initiative was instrumental in our Board of Trustees' decision to prohibit new endowment investments in fossil fuels, a major step towards our goal of carbon neutrality by 2040. Thanks to you, we are moving to recognize our nation's long-standing debts to indigenous people. Activism on behalf of members of your class and leadership by college government spurred our decision to replace Columbus Day with an Indigenous Peoples Day and fueled our commitment to publicly acknowledge that Wellesley is built on the ancestral and unceded lands of Indigenous people. And we look forward to having our official land acknowledgement to share next year. Thanks to you, Wellesley has made major strides towards equity and inclusion, an essential foundation of all true excellence. You've held us accountable to these values in many ways, from pushing for changes in the role of campus police, to urging us to work with our food service provider, AVI, towards encouraging their 100% divestment from prison food systems. Because of your continuing advocacy on this issue and that of the college on your behalf, I can now announce that just this week, AVI has indeed committed to ending any existing business they currently have in prisons and has pledged not to pursue any new business with public or private prisons in the future. You spoke, the college listened, and together we've made change that we can all be proud of. Thanks to you, we made it through this pandemic year with only a handful of COVID cases on campus, a sharp contrast to so many of our peer institutions. On campus, you cared for each other every day by doing the hardest thing by holding to COVID protocols that forced you to stay apart. And so you traded free-form socializing for intimate communities of blockmates. At the same time, you found ways to come together by reimagining Wellesley's traditions. Your house presidents led the way, doing everything from designing a reverse flower Sunday, where first years gave flowers to seniors, to hosting the first remote lip sync contest. Yeah. And this spring, you sent postcards to students who had been on campus during the fall so that they could feel connected from afar. Seniors studying remotely, you too 
found ways to connect with each other while making a difference in their own communities, working in food pantries as contact tracers and advocating for the incarcerated and other vulnerable populations. In these ways and so many more, you've changed Wellesley. And equally important, Wellesley has changed you. It's fitting that you are the green class. Green is the color of growth and your growth over these past four years has been nothing short of astounding. The degrees you see, receive today will carry you far, a testament to the power of a Wellesley education. They reflect your deep knowledge of disciplines, your capacity for critical thinking, your agility, your integrity, creativity, and perseverance. But the growth that I've witnessed goes far beyond academic mastery. At least as impressive is your growth as human beings. You've become more empathic, more compassionate, more flexible, and more strategic. And in doing so, you've become more effective change makers. It's one thing to take a strong stand, quite another to make it real. You, class of 2021, have shown that you can do both. In remarks like these, college presidents often issue a commencement charge, a challenge to new graduates to do any number of important things, to serve the world, to be true to themselves, to pursue their dreams. But for you, class of 2021, the only charge I have for you is keep going. Keep building a more just and sustainable world. Keep growing in knowledge, kindness, and empathy. Keep meeting people where they are and treating others as you would be treated. Keep cherishing, cheering on, and drawing strength from each other. Keep becoming who you are. Keep making the change you want to see in the world. In this, you will not be alone. Today, you join the awe-inspiring network of Wellesley alumni, a global, global community of some 36,000 strong. You have likely already experienced its power through internships, mentorships, and other forms of support. You will come to appreciate its strength and reach more and more over time. You enter the world at a decisive moment. So much work lies ahead. Indeed, it's never ending. I think of these words from writer Zadie Smith. Progress is never permanent, will always be threatened, must be redoubled, restated, and reimagined if it is to survive. This is never more apparent. Class of 2021, the challenges that lie before you are great, but so are your strengths. You are evergreen and ever Wellesley, and I can think of no one more equipped to chart the path forward. Thank you for all that you've done so far and for all that you will do. You've challenged us and you've changed us. Now you venture forth to challenge and change the world. This is your moment. Congratulations. <laughs> Provost Shannon will now present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Madam President, it is the privilege of my office to present to you, on behalf of the faculty of Wellesley College, the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts please rise? By the authority of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, 
vested in the Board of Trustees and by them delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts and admit you to all the rights, dignities, and responsibilities of that degree. Lean Ababne, Adithi Ape Kumar, Sarah Abramson, Francis Mosion Adams Meteye, Sophia Margaret Adelson, Desha Afi Adote. Karina Afonso. Leilani Aguila. Omopalola Akinson Moye. Tulai Kimika Akolu. Efwa Akano, Danielle Aldred, Nura Yasmin Ali, Shukri Ahmed Ali. Zoe Allen. Lulu Naif Al Saud, Caroline Shelby Alt, Karen Alvarez Julian, Ashley Abena Mame Pokwa Amwabang. Shraddha Anand, Brigitta Suzanne Anderson, Ashley Anderson, June Rue Anderson, Ajwa Diffie Aintui. Ella Yasmin Aposte. Rebecca Arengo. Rebecca Aristotelides. Sophia Ashaba. Sophia Rachel Ayaz. Kate Azar, Priscilla Aluakemi Badusi, Bastian Baggett, Shania Baldwin, Taylor Balfour. Mona Hussein Baloch, Zoha Barker, yeah. 
Patience Barkas. Suzanne Morris Barlow. Catherine Alexandra Barnes. Sophie Tamara Borowski. Brianna Elizabeth Barragan Olson. Cecilia Asunsao Barreto. Chantel Kate Batacon. Elsa Bowadick. Rachel Louise Beaton. Talia Shira Benheim. Rachel Marie Berets. Lacey Jane Berg. Matilda Lynn Burke. Anna Catherine Bayette. Sasha Yumi Blockman. Elizabeth Ann Claudia Borecki. Holly Bork. Sophie Crosby Bravo. Ella Noreen Bryder. Anique Brinkerhoff. Genevieve Brittingham. Julia Nicole Bronzy. Tiana Maria Broti. Amelia Brown. Danielle Brubaker. Santhia Bulchandani. Cal Bullet, <laughs> Sophia Fox Bussey, <laughs> Michelle Bayer, <laughs> Paloma Calderon Carabantes, <laughs> Grace Elizabeth Callahan. Julia Calventus Coveney. Mira Elizabeth Lynn Carlinia. Landon Casolari. Marine Cidillo. Amy Chan. Catherine Chan. Sarah Chang. Connie Kimberly Chow. Maria Charles. Monvi Chaudhry. Claire Marie Cheek. <laughs> Katrina Chen. <laughs> Chen Chen. <laughs> Hao Min Chen IV. Jamie Fa An Chen. Julia Yenjing Chen.
Robin Chen. Iran Chen. Emily Juliet Cheng. Jocelyn Cheng. Zoe Tara Cheng. Lucy Dorothy Cheskin. Sierra Chow. Emma Torres Chickles. Alyssa Kayulani Cho. Eugene Eden Cho. Preya Anka Choksi. Sophie Julianne Cristiano. Katerina Elise Christoph. Celine Cristori. April Chu. Lily Chu. Nancy Chu. Z Chua. Jamie Chung. Asha Ann Colbert. Lauren Rebel Kolodny. Louise Tracy Conaty. Sophie C. Copitas Twalan. Lucy Louise Cordes. Brooke Corso. Grace Halley Coles. Philippa Catherine Cronin. Samantha El Alto Cuneta. Megan Renee D'Alessandro. Nainika Das. Through three corner, Dash. Paula Marissa DeAnda. Emma Caroline Deary. Stephanie De Avila Montagna. Isabella Slappy Maloney De Hurt. Dana Berenice de la Cruz. <laughs> Chi Han Dong. <laughs> Su Fang Deng. <laughs> Carson Elizabeth Dennis. <laughs> Hope de Rasmo. Annika Rajiv Desai. Sadfika Devrani. Kismuth Kaur Daliwal. Catherine Sophie Denzel. Kate James Dolph. Saffron Dominguez. Veda Dante Reddy. Sophie Nicole Dowdy. Devin Carmela Dowling. Emily Anna Dromgold. Jennifer Duan. 
Kelsey Dunn. Charlotte Smith Durham. Gabrielle Joy Dyer. Julia Danielle Elman. Jenna El Sawaf. Rosalie Maltby Emerson. Nayeli Alejandra Esparza. Kate Estrada. Esther Fan. George Ann Fan. Madanit Faleka. Isabel Fernandez. Clara Cooper Ferrari. Genevieve Helen Fisher. Molly Flanagan. Kayla Jade Fong. Amelia Paul Foreman. Wen Yu Vicky Fu. Hajira Fuad. Hannah Fuhrer. Leslie Alicia Fuentes. Kai Fuller. Giovanna Gigi Gabo. Alexandra Christine Gago. Catherine Julia Gallison. Eva Gao. Estrella Isabel Garcia. Carla Gabriela Garcia. Charlene Garcia. Olivia Palmer Gaunt. Catherine Harper Gavitt. Catherine Eileen Gadula. Lauren Elizabeth Gedney. Anna Gefke. Michelle Marie Flaherty Geller. Michaela Elizabeth Gerardin. Sabrine Garad. Anicia Gillespie. Megan Goldsmith. Lindsay Gordon. Lydia Gramstad. Alex Granados. Beatrice Cecile Grauman Boss. Melanie Eliza Graves. <laughs> Sophia Electra Gillespie Greenberg. <laughs> Julianne Griffin. <laughs> Alexa Gross. 
Jinyu Gu. Isabella Guerrero. Devanshi Gupta. Isha Gupta. Melissa Severa Guzman. Deborah Ham. Gabriel Halford. Sarah Hamadani. Kira Hamilton. Ayla Han. Inhe Irene Han. Catherine Ying Han. Alyssa Janae Hanna. Mitsuki Hanada. Margaret Grace Harrigan. Serenity Catherine Harris. Sophia Barbara Barber Harrison. Claire Hayhow. Melissa He. Michaela Henry. Erica Herman. Diana Hernandez. Glenda Hernandez. Kimberly Hernandez. Maria Vanessa Hernandez. Karina Herrera. Samantha Hintz. Rachel Elena Strasberg Hodes. Larissa Natalie Horodisky. Vivian Ho. Megan Howard. Kelly Shu. Jane Hua. Jesse Huang. Lisa Huang. Vivian Xiaoyang Huang. Madeline Hudala. Shreya Huilgo. <laughs> Sophie Hurwitz. <laughs> Irene Ingabire. <laughs> Saran Innes. <laughs> Fatima Irfan. Shahrazad Shez Adil Jafri. Kimi Milasha Keisha James. Leah Patricia James. Isha Jampala. Camila Jamro.
Nikki Jensen. G. Sun John. Carolina Alisa Jimenez. Holly Jin. Leisha Jing. Carolyn North Johnson. Marciana Johnson. Shanez Ray Johnson. <laughs> Zoe Jonick. Kimberly Joseph. Marbea Juarez. Aya Caino. Devyani Kalra. Phoebe Cow. Maris Carner. Emily May Katz. Tatum Kateri Kawabata. Anna Kawakami. Soren Rose Kernan. Adelia Khan. Vidala Garula Kandori. Amanda Kim. Emily Nayan Kim. Hisu Ali Kim. Nayan Stella Kim. Emma Janine King. Margaret Etsy King. Alexandra Marie Caritzi. Hannah Z. Klein. Sarah Klein. Ailish Klepper. Elizabeth Ann Kong. Sanjana Kotari, Julian Creevy, Catherine Kulwick, Anissa Karani, Tara Karuvala, Samantha Lai. Carolyn Lamb, Sarah Lieberman, Landau, Anna Kate Langham, Emily Larios, Sanjana Lath, Kamaya Haripriya Manel Lakeham Wasson. Lakeham Wasson. <laughs> Alicia Lee. B. Jayun Lee. Courtney Lee. Juna Lee. Madison Ann Lee. Madison Claire Lee. 
Jaylene Dos Los Angeles Limas and Tunez. Misha Lersky, Lerska. Rachel Levy. Jasmine Lee. Jessica Lee. Nicole Lee. Rosie Lee. Angela Lee. Fiona Libby. May Liu. Sakura Lee Carr. Molly Elena Lights. Amin Lim. Daniela Limbania. Christina Lin. Kate Lin. Annika Jane Lip. Angela Liu. Annie Wayne Lu. Jitong Gu. Blythe Brooke Logan. Jacqueline Lopez Ruiz. Rosalind Austin Rusnock Lucier. Artemisia Luck. Avery Gian Lume. Tara Lutra. Michelle Yu Ma. Sherun Ma. Emily Dixon Magna. Layla Madavi. Stephanie Jackie McCready's. Anena Malik. Jill Mankoff. Molly Margaret Mann. Natalie Marshall. Emily Josephine Martin. Elizabeth Jacqueline Mason. Julie Ann Mason. Morgan Paige Mastriani. Katya Ruth Meadow Matthews. Alexa Ireland Matheson. Eleanor Keen Maddox. Emily Matlin. Erica Mall. Nicole Marie Malden. Hannah Elizabeth May. Julia Marie McDonald. Molly Beatrix McLaughlin. Miriam Lehman McNerney. Christine Chen Meter. Caitlin Mello. Jennifer Mendez. Kenza Mahimdat. Rawa Michael. Annalise Naomi Michelson. Hannah Elizabeth Michaud. Ashton Milford. Madison Miller. Andrea Mock. 
Tatiana Ivy Moy. Anna Larry Morgan. Francelis Morillo Suarez. McKenna Claire Morris. Time Morton. Martina Mata Silva. Tanita Mintaleni. Sarah Mueller. Corinne Muller. Lakia Yannette Mumford. Mikkel Chloe Musi Kavan. Mikkel Musi Kavanu. Anmol Nagar. Danya Nagaswaran. Kayla Rose Nakib. Eleanor Claire Nash. Rachel Navarrete. Nokukanya Victoria Nobe. Samara Joanne Nelson. Simone Annette Nevels. Thanda Johari Vayton Newkirk. Jenny Lean Wynn. Isabel Nickerson. Hannah Nice. Lucy Norton. Vanessa Tunguanayo. Ify. Monica Pearl Ochoa. Isabella O'Connor. Destiny Christine O'Dell. June Elizabeth Ofstedal. Serafina O. Isabella Oliva. Mira Zainab Omortak. Lisa Ori. Isabel Ortiz. Abby O. Juniper Osbold. Kaylee Pilato. Grace Yongshi Pan. Abigail Elizabeth Paracoyi. Shreya Parjan. Lauren Won Me Park. Michaela Park. Suyun Louisa Park. Emily Page Patterson. 
Chloe Pierce. Mona Peng. Paulina Perlstein. Danielle Aaron Pergola. Tendai Payton. Celine Kim Fu. Nephis Melody Perzada. Felicity Moon Pollard. Guadalupe Portillo Daras. Olivia Grace Shylack Postal. Darina Postu Paca. Juliana Popard. Amina Prelu. Irina Preya. Carolyn Nicole Price. Elizabeth Alisa Purvis. Roxolana Pilipiv. Corinne Quinn. Paloma Quiroga. Hannah Quiros. Rachel Rabayeva. Catherine Raboliati. Jessica Rad. Jaslyn Kirsten Raggio. Niha Rabandari. Ishel Ramirez. Carter Van Pelt Ramquist. Helen Redmond. Tulani Reeves Miller. <laughs> Natalie Adele Reed. Marlene Guadalupe Renderos. Sandra Riano. Saren Riggs Davis. Anna Rijal. Sophia Rim. Alexis Estelle Rivet. Aliyah Rizvan. Isabella Roberts. Ashley Jawa Rochford. Gabriela Rodriguez. Evelyn Guadalupe Ruiz Aguilera. Hannah Catherine Russo. Charlotte Emily Ryan. Jacqueline Chirichella Sabino. Nina Sonali Suchdave. 
Raymond Sawney. <laughs> Naomi Sujnani. <laughs> Aisha Saldana. <laughs> Lisbeth Salinas Reyes. <laughs> Lillian Saul. Shruti Samla. Sara Emina Sanson Hernandez. Luisa Santa Barbara Nascimento. A Abigail Rose Schleichorn. Abigail Schneider. <laughs> Olivia Schultz Patterson. <laughs> Julia Francesca Shortino. <laughs> Margaret Frances Murphy Salinger. <laughs> Cassie Rui Shaw. Hannah Mae Sutswin Shao. <laughs> Yasmin Shaboff. <laughs> Dosfia Shalin. <laughs> Samara Heisinga Shaz. <laughs> Jessica Shen. Michelle Shen. Aria Sheth. Aviv Yahel Shimoni. Ava Laura Shipman. Michelle Shue. Claire Siege. Asa Francis Pirelli Silverstein. Utkanta Sindwani. Sophia Sirota. Ayana Smith. <laughs> Ramona Smooker. <laughs> Mallory So. Otua Subukwe. Vita Solorio Fielder. Yokai Songore. Emily Joan Spaulding, Jean Lee Spencer, February Spikner, Annabelle Garland Springer, Solve Stensland, Anne Stoschel. Fanula Stone. <laughs> Hana Sugioka. <laughs> Violet Pilar Sulka Hughes. <laughs> Elizabeth Ford Sullivan. <laughs> Janelle Dominique Sullivan. <laughs> Mohan Swen. Shui Sun, Margaret Sun, Serena Sun, Marie Teresa Tan,
Jenny Tang. Zara Narayana Tartar. Anna Taylor. Juliana Grace Tedeschi. Jaren Termasudek. Mika Tukar. <laughs> Pearl Shenlong Tyson. Vasha Thomas. Desiree Thorne. Megan Rose Timmons. Sarah Jane Timmons. Isabella Tomovsky. Kayla Marie Tracy. Hennen Borgman Triba. Lucille Hu Tsao. Allison Nicole Turner. Grace Turner. <laughs> Catherine Ann Twitt. Haruka Ueda. Melody Umorin. Angela Ehinome Adiambo Anuban. Alana Janine Youthkanat. Isabella Valencia. Isabella Van Atten. Annika Vandeyar. Maliva Van Tile. Tyler Angel Vargas. Christine Vega Porhidarian. River Elliot Vetter. Emma Catherine Gapud Vellini. Adele Leanne Walker. Annika Mira Walker. Anna Song Wan. Casey Yajing Wang. Peggy Wang. Haley Walker Warren. Faiza Molid Warsami. Thara Waddle. <laughs> Yutsie Phyllis Wei. <laughs> Molly Wyke. <laughs> Eileen Wen. <laughs> Sage Wenzel Bream. Corinne Nicole Savard Wilklow. <laughs> Catherine Hamilton Winson. <laughs> Caroline Grace Witten. <laughs> Carissa Shu Ting Wong. <laughs> Grace Wong. Jordan Setsuko Wong. Jaden Wood. Phoebe Woodruff. Lillian Wurst.
Jessica Wu. Shirley Wu. Agnita Xavier. Ming Yi Sha. Chu Yue Xiao. Alicia Xian. Rosalinda Xiang. Sandra Xu. Natasha Yajnik. Miranda Yang. Valeria Yang. Janita Yao. Vera Ye. Emily Ann Yeager. Emily Jiyun Yo. Hilal. Sylvia Yu. Jasmine Yuan. <laughs> Majesty Kayla Zander. Sylvia Zemer. <laughs> Anna Christine Gabhaiba. Helena Zhang. Emily Jai. Hong Zhong. Hai Zhong. Kerry Zhang. Ching Yong Zhong. Rachel Zhang. Wejia Nina Zhang. Angela Zhao. Nicole Chow. Abby Menden Zong. Sinbei Zhou. Jade Elizabeth Zhu. Iga Drew. Sophia Zoberman. Jessica Zo. Congratulations. Congratulations and best wishes to the class of 2021. I salute you. We will now have a short video. Remember when you first started at Wellesley? You hardly knew anybody. Everything was new, strange, and exciting at the same time. At Convocation that year, you were urged to keep a beginner's mind, to hold tight to possibility as the world unfolded around you. And you did. Over time, you learned together, discovered who you wanted to be together, built friendships, and found your voice. Somewhere along the way, you joined together to become a class, a community of sibs. Last March, when the pandemic hit, your lives were upended. For the past year, you have been a class divided by geography, 
but united in spirit, in friendship, and in purpose. And as the world changed and challenged you, you forged your own path, both as individuals and as a class. You weren't going to let the pandemic stop you. You worked together to push for change at Wellesley and in the world and made it happen on climate change, indigenous rights, democracy, racial equity, and police reform. And you discovered along the way the power of joy as resistance. Because as you said, the world's beauty exists beyond the limits of a planner, in moments that cannot be measured. Class of 2021, as you leave Wellesley and take your next step towards a bright future, may you stay ever green and ever glorious. We leave the last word to you. My dadi, dadu, nani, and nanu, Thank you for giving me the world and for showing me how to find my place within it. Je vous aime de tout mon cœur. And my grandparents, Grandma, Nana, and Grandpa. Hi, Mom and Dad. I feel, oh God, I can't believe it. <laughs> Thank you for giving me the opportunities that you didn't have. It will take me a lifetime to thank you for all that you've done. You've always taught me that I can do anything that I set my mind to. I couldn't have done it without you. And I wouldn't be here if it weren't for each of you. I appreciate all of the sacrifices you've made in coming to this country and walking the road that you have. Hi, Mom and Dad. I know you both thought I would not submit one of these messages, but here I am. <laughs> Every one of you, Gail Agnes, Bongani, Joshua Masungulo, um, did I say Bongani? <laughs> I feel like it was just yesterday you were dropping me off, and now here we are graduating. I know that I'm the first person in our family to graduate from college, but I won't be the last. And the professors that I've had at Wellesley. I love you all very much, and I can't wait to see you soon. To the class of 2021, yay, we did it! Yay! Now, will you please stand it is our tradition to close commencement with the singing of the first and fourth stanzas of America the Beautiful, written by Catherine Lee Bates. <laughs> Professor Bates was a graduate of Wellesley College in the class of 1880 and a distinguished member of our English department. Lucy Cordes from the class of 2021 will lead us as we all join in singing America the Beautiful. Lucy, that was beautiful, thank you. Please be seated. 
and I'd like to invite Dean Marquez back to deliver the benediction. Dear class of 2021, may you move into this next season of your journey, releasing fear and embracing hope. May the lessons of your ancestors, mentors, this community be a guide when you are unsure of what to do next. May you work towards a more just and peaceful world. May you live deeply rooted in kindness and gratitude. Go in peace with our blessings and love. Amen and congratulations. Thank <laughs> you.